Google Plays like the cube. And I'm Anna. And we are AC AD Productions. Get ready to nod your head and laugh out loud as we bring an unfiltered perspective to black life in predominantly white spaces. So, welcome to the Head Nod, Season 1, Black Life at a PWI. <laughs> PWI's Canvas. Black resilience takes its stand. Diverse hues unite. Snap, snap, essence light. Thank you, chat GPT, <laughs> for bringing us this haiku. <laughs> Welcome to the head nod. Head nod. Today, we have a really awesome guest that's just gonna, that's gonna be joining us. His name is Brandon McGraw. He is the money man, as I call him, Uncle <laughs> Daddy Warbucks, as my, my, my children call him. He's currently working as the director of global accounting operations for the Not Worldwide. He is also the founding president of the Barron Black Alumni Leadership Coalition. And in his spare time, he loves to travel. He is literally all over the world at all times. Glad he's here with us today. <laughs> Um, he likes to enjoy new cultures and cuisines, and most importantly, he likes to spend time with his family and friends. Welcome, Brandon. Thanks for having me, Adele and Anna. I'm so excited to be here on the head nod, for real, not in so, my head. right? <laughs> you get it. So, tell us about, yes. like we said, who you are, but tell us the school you went to, your degree, and like the, the call out for the school. Like, what, you know, what, what do we say? Go ahead. So I am a proud, proud, proud alumni, alumni of the Pennsylvania State University. We are Penn State. I'm sorry, I had to. That's I it. had to. <laughs> you know, you know it. Graduated class of 2009 uh, with a bachelor's degree in finance as well as accounting. Uh huh. Isn't there another one? No, oh. just just finance and accounting. Yeah, he, he, so, so he had all the degrees. I, degreed I, up. You know, I, I over <laughs> I overachieved a little bit. I couldn't just do one. I had to walk out with two. <laughs> I definitely did not. <laughs> <laughs> so things I didn't do. Why? I love it. A P W I, Brandon. Why? <sighs> you know. I really wanted to go to a school specifically around and and think of a place where I would be able to make a difference in terms of the experience. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, born and raised. Uh, I grew up in a predominantly African-American environment. And I looked at some of the PWIs when I was going through my college process and I said, well, if I can go to one of those and change the perspective on the way that they see African-American individuals, then my job will be done. And so when I started looking at you know, Penn State in particular, I was like, oh, OK, there's like 19 campuses. And sure, we can go to the main one. But I looked and saw Penn State, Erie, the Barron College up in the corner and I was like, <laughs> Ooh, that's <laughs> probably that's probably the one where I think I could probably make the most impact after also doing a campus visit. So it just seemed to I, it be the best fit for wanting to do that, potentially change the perspective of 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 white students, but also at the same time was close enough if I needed to get back home and and so on. I could do that pretty easily. You felt so. like Erie was close enough if you need to get back to Brooklyn. <laughs> it was close. To, I mean, consider hey, I could have, I could have went to Pepperdine <laughs> in California. That's people. true. That's true. I, I, close enough. <laughs> that's so close different. Enough. Like that's such a unique take, Brandon, to say like you wanted to go somewhere that you felt like you can create change. You know, and like really leave your stamp on things. Like that's that's a really dope reason. I don't think we've heard that yet, Anna. Like saying I wanted to just kind of go somewhere to just know I can create a different environment going in. Like, that's that's really dope. Did you feel it more? Did you visit the campus? Like, did you feel it more when you went? I did. I When I visited the campus, it very much was like, oh, okay. It kind of gave me that feel of like, 
there's a white picket fence. This is Mayberry, completely different from the projects that were two blocks away from, from where I grew up and lived. And it was just such a different environment. And considering that while I am an African-American male and that is how I present myself in the world, I am also very cognizant of the fact that I do not look that way in terms of my appearance. People see my you know, skin color and they're like, oh, okay, he really is white, obviously, I'm, I am not, um, but but you know sometimes, and Adele has an interesting perspective on that <laughs> uh, during our freshman year. But um, yeah, so I was very aware that like I'm an, I am a unicorn, where I am an African American male that presents in this society that looks anything but that. And so if I could go into an environment and 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 again kind of change your perspective on the way the culture is approached or looked at, then the job there, my job is done. Well, I think you had a much higher purpose, child. I did not have such a high purpose uh, walking on the campus of my PWI. Now, I wanted to do some good, but uh, I wasn't really, uh, yeah, I didn't have it all thought out in that way. Now, Brandon and everybody tuning in, y'all can't see Brandon unless you're watching this on <laughs> somewhere. But Brandon, when I see you, I see a black guy. That's but I also us. know what we look like, exactly. right? That's black people. That's us. so that part. And can we so, say, and Anna, part. to further that, I'm gonna take you to Penn State, Brandon. He had a little fro. He didn't have locks. He had a little. He had a little fro. Okay, like, <laughs> the, the coils. Okay, like he had the coils. Yes, I was giving the coils. I was giving coils. And they still uh-huh. thought you were white. And they still and they, thought they, he was white. They, so to to if if I may, Brandon, do you? Go ahead, please, please. Not to step on Brandon's toes, but he said Adele had an experience. That's literally like one Mm -hmm. of the most shocking moments at school. So (laughs) it was me, Brandon, and one other friend, no, two other friends. One was a white girl, one was our black friend. And we went to the mall, I think, Brandon, where we went or whatever. It was my birthday. It was like his 18th birthday, birthday. right? So we were driving around, taking Brandon. Brandon wanted to buy cigarettes because he could. Like, it was just like (laughs) Brandon, right? So we pulled up, like, outside of somewhere. And so Heather, our our white friend, Mm -hmm. we're sitting in the car talking. And I said something like, if this Negro don't come on, like, I just made a little passive, like, comment. Because I was just (laughs) tired of driving around Mm -hmm. at that point doing 18th birthday things. And so she was like, what did you say? And I was like, Brandon need to bring his black butt on. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> come on. And she was like, Brandon? Like, the guy who just went in there? I was like, yeah. What's wrong? She was like, Brandon's Brandon's black? Like, she was just so confused. She was like, he's black? I was like, hell yeah, he's black. What do you mean? <laughs> like, and our other friend was like, he black as hell. What you mean? And she's like, but his skin looks like mine. Like, what do you mean? I said, but his <laughs> nose, his eyes, his ears, his his hair, his top of my head, shoulders, knees, and toes his lips. look like me, okay? Like, he, looks, <laughs> he looks like me. Look at that man's lips. He looks like me. <laughs> And she was stuck. So Brandon gets back in the car and she's like, Brandon, you're black? He's like, what? (laughs) (laughs) Hello to you too. I'm glad I'm back. Thanks so much. Like, what happened here? I step out for five I step out for five minutes and what? I said, Brandon, she thought you were white. Brandon was like, I am very black. Like all, all the way, okay. Brandon's family is Jamaican. Like Brandon is black. <laughs> Hilarious, yo. Yes, oh, yes. That thing was. I mean, it took. We were. We had a great laugh about that because it just. Go, it just that is indicative of the of why I was there. Right, that higher purpose you talked about, Anna. That was like, yep. Now I'm here to change the narrative and and it all started on my 18th birthday in the mall with 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 heather um and that has sort of been sort of a recovering theme throughout my throughout my experience uh at penn state and you know i had you know it hit that on many different areas i could distinctly remember my very first day of school and i don't know if adele knows this enough but we maybe have talked about it um my dad had drove me to campus 
So we were we were there. It was like seven in the morning and it was very early. And we was like, okay, let's go to the diner. So we went to Perkins, uh, which is like Perkins. a family style restaurant. Um, and they have good breakfast. And so we got there. And so as we were driving off of the campus, we noticed there was a cop car following us. Now, you know, it's not like it's anything going on. You know, my father's doing the speed limit. Everything is going fine. We get to Perkins, which is maybe a mile from the campus. We park the car. We get out. The cop continues to drive over. So then it's like, okay, my father's like, that's weird. I was like, well, maybe he just was going the same direction. Didn't think about it. Then we, we get into Perkins there's no one there because, again, it's now seven in the morning. It's fairly empty. Like, it was damn near empty. And there were all these seats to the front. And the hostess, who happened to be a white woman, um, <laughs> literally took us to the very last table in the back of the restaurant where all of these other open tables were very empty with no one sitting there. And <laughs> both my father and I asked her, I was like, is there a reason why we have to sit all the way back here? And she was like, oh, no, 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 no. Do you want to sit somewhere closer? And I was like, yeah. So we literally moved all the way to the front. And I remember my dad saying, are you sure you want to go to school here in this town? Because mm -hmm. at, at that point, that was the first kind of real exposure I had to perceptions about race and 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 again even though it's like you see the both of us walking in here and they were like oh we you got followed by the cops and then now you're getting essentially pushed to the back of the restaurant but this time it wasn't the bus right so it felt very it, it was it was such an interesting situation considering i'm from brooklyn new york and that's just not something you experience ever and so that that kind of made me feel like, OK, I definitely I'm here for a reason. I'm here for purpose. And that mission that I told you guys later definitely needs to be carried out here because I'm not going to be sitting in the back of the Perkins restaurant for four years. That's mm. not going to happen. So how did that shape like all of your other experiences at Penn State? I mean, that was your first that was like your first introduction to campus. I'm sure that that I mean, you'd already made your decision. Things had already been in the, in place, you know. So this sort of that moment set the stage for the rest of your your time. It did, but you know what? What I think was also indicative of just like, yep, I'm here. Is the very first day I met my tribe of people. And when I say my tribe of people, Adele was there, Crystal, Sasha, Brittany. It was a consortium, Cameron. There was just a bunch of beautiful people that looked just like me on this campus. So in my mind, I'm like, OK, maybe we all here to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> we had to change the narrative, too, and, and so on and so forth. And we became such a good uh, a good group of friends. And for me, they were very much my safe space. And it was like, even when I was out, and Adele will tell you, like, I had a lot of friends, white, black, yellow, green. But especially around the white friends, there was this element of, like, code switching and having to learn and adapt and, and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, I was always true to who I was and always knew that at the end of the day, I had my safe space. And there were times where, you know, I brought, you know, my worlds together and my friends were mingled. I never forget when um, Adele joined Lion Ambassadors, which at that point was predominantly white myself. And then there was her. And it was very much like. OK, so here we are. You got the two black people amongst the sea of the 20 white people. And we went in and kind of just made some, some real change. I led as president from the front and it was an, an amazing experience. And we, we were able to have people take us seriously. We were able to have uncomfortable conversations um, from from our counterparts who really just wanted to learn and understand what our experience was as, as being, you know, African Americans at a PWI. And then nothing was even greater to then when my term as president went up to actually turn my my term over to Adele, who then served as the president for our, our senior year. So here it is, like it's in this, you know, 
prestigious club within the Penn State organization being led consecutively by African Americans. So I think for us, that's our legacy that nobody shared because they had it hasn't happened again. So <laughs> so so you know, it, it, again, it goes back to that point of like we were able to flip the script and change the narrative about what they thought about us. So y'all was like a dynamic duo. Wait, I want to know all the stories. What was y'all getting into that y'all <laughs> set that up like that? You know what? It wasn't. It wasn't like we planned it. You know, it's just like I said. If I'm really a, if I'm a join in there, I'm gonna still be the blackest me. I can't help it. I'm black. I'm black as hell. <laughs> I'm gonna just be me. Okay, they just go out to deal with this. But it was just yeah. like going in and still just kind of being like you know, true to myself and stuff and just like people liking me and stuff. And it just, it literally, I wasn't going to run. Like Brandon was like, you should run. I think I was like, I ended up being like secretary randomly under Brandon because someone quit. Mm-hmm. And then they were like, mm-hmm. you should run. I'm like, they ain't going to vote for me. I'm black as hell in this organization. And then when I won, I was just like, huh? Like I was stuck, mm-hmm. you know? And I was like, bad. Okay, let's go. Let's do this. And let's like Brandon said, really try to, create a world of change because I was also president of the multicultural council. So let's bring this multicultural organization and this predominantly white organization together and blend those two worlds and really see, you know, how we can collaborate and like, you know, build a bridge and just kind of be better amongst each other. So I really, really, that's something I really, really like. It's like, I'm going to do this. We're going we gonna to work together. But it was not, it was not planned whatsoever. <laughs> it just kind of worked it out really, that way. It wasn't, but it became an ultimate superpower because people saw on campus as we continue to kind of just walk around. Because if you was a Lion Ambassador, people knew it. You had your coat. You had your polo. Oh, that was so it, was, it, was, it was very much like the high school letterman's jacket type situation. It was like okay. people knew who you were. And it was like, oh, you had to apply to get in there, go through interviews. And the like. so it was very much a, it's you know, a very prestigious organization to be a part of. So when you take that and then obviously Adele being the president of the Multicultural Council, which covered 16 clubs and organizations of different uh, backgrounds. You had the Organization of African Students, the uh, Association of Black Collegians, the, uh, th- I think they called it to, they changed it to gays, but it used to be called Trigon, Trigon. For, our, for our LGBTQ sisters They changed it to brothers. just gays? So like, to, to gays, G A Z E O. I can't remember. Look at Anna's face. Got, Look at Anna. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts. I, I think we went the wrong direction, but okay. Um, but but you know they changed it to like I mean there was all of this stuff. So but it was so interesting because you had a prestigious club and organization such as the Lion Ambassadors have a direct line to these kind of smaller orgs um, that were just trying to create places and spaces of comfortability for people that felt and looked like them. And then those students, uh, the the, the white students in particular, having a direct conduit to to interact with those students. And we were able to create relationships and friendships and even relationships and things of that nature. So it really, it really became this sort of super org, if you will, of, of, of just these two groups yeah, coming together. Like and that. it didn't go unnoticed. And so y'all was running things. And so what was it like, you know, being a black leader at a PWI? Ooh, uh, it definitely came with its own set, <laughs> its own set of challenges. I think the first one being the perception of people not wanting to take you seriously Mm -hmm. because they had never seen, you know, a black person in a position of power before. And their perception was we would use this position of power not for good or only for the benefit of our people and not the benefit of the collective and what was based on the the overall um, needs and desires to push the organization forward and not our own agendas. So that was the first uh, the first kind of challenge that we had to overcome. Secondarily, the second challenge I think was just the pure getting folks to actually buy in and trust trust you. Um, and through that, you had to really sort of 
create relationships and sometimes make decisions that weren't always going to be popular with your people that mm-hmm. you know were true and blue to you. And it's like you had to kind of get them to, to say like, look, I don't really like the decision that you made, but I understand it's probably for the greater good. And and just having folks trusting your, your ability to decision make, especially your fellow African-American colleagues. Yeah, I would I would definitely agree with that. I, you know, it's interesting because, like I said, I was president of MCC and line ambassadors at the same time. And, you know, I, I felt like it was more of a challenge for line ambassadors versus MCC, you know. Um, I think one of the realest things was just kind of like Brandon said, facing certain challenges of people trusting you to make certain decisions. So like Brandon, I don't know if you remember this, but it was this one person, I'm not going to name her name who had applied to the line ambassadors maybe a few times, two to three times (laughs) prior to my presidency and Mm -hmm. got rejected because your grades have to be a certain, you have to have a certain GPA. Um, you have to have a certain appearance, like not physical, but like you can't be drunk all the time walking around campus because you are the representation of the campus. When people visit campus, you're, you greet them like you, t- you, you're, you give them tours. You're the face of Penn State. So she didn't kind of fit that because she was not in a good way. Often. We'll just she say She was that. outside as the kids outside. say. <laughs> she was all outside the time. as the kids okay. say. Exactly. And so she had applied under Brandon, got rejected. She had applied under the president before him, got rejected. But then she applied under me. Same thing. GPA then went way down. Like we can't, like that is literally the rule. It says that on the application. And so, you know, Brandon and I work together in, you know, we have a whole, our e-board voted yay or nay the e-board decided no because basic requirements weren't met so we send out you know acceptance letters and rejection letters so when she got hers she got mad because adele rejected her not the line ambassadors <laughs> adele adele rejected her and mm-hmm. next thing you know mm-hmm. she's reaching out to our um our what's the, what's the staff the one staff member that's like um the the advisor our adult advisor writing letters to her mm-hmm. about me i need to get taken down as the president i don't serve correctly Ooh. and all these things and i'd have a meeting with wow. her the the representative and like one other person to like i didn't even want to i was like i don't have a case to plead look at her gpa like I don't I don't need to <laughs> like I did what was required of us if you don't want us to write the rejection letters or you don't like what i said cuz I didn't say that to me. I was just like, you you know, your GPA. Like, but I could have said it more delicately. But compared to her other letters, it wasn't. It literally just because it was coming from my mouth. So it's like certain things like that, you know, kind of came up in certain situations where because it was just me leading, like I should have accepted her or how dare I reject her because she didn't say the line mm-hmm. ambassadors. She made it about me. Mm-hmm. And the crazy thing is, like, me and her didn't have no no issues prior to that. But once I became president, all all the smoke. She wanted all the smoke, and she got it. She she talked Mind to me you, since. Mind you, there's a whole selection committee. Committee. So it wasn't it wasn't like that decision was made unilaterally, as Adele, right. as Adele has explained. Like I had a say, and it was like you had done nothing to change the rejection that you had the year before and the year before it. that. So <laughs> and the year before that. So it's like. And that viewpoint's gonna be represented it will be represented in these meetings just by virtue of the people being present when you were trying to do these things. Exactly. <laughs> Which was also good because my fellow lions like agreed with me and like supported me through that. You know, like they came to the office in my defense as well, like, yo, like Adele is not wrong in this. Like, this is a line ambassador decision. She just happens to be the face of the line ambassador. So it's like, you know, it's a little bit of challenges with that. But like Brandon said, you know, working to blend the two organizations and get SGA on board. Like it was a few steps, but it was good. You know, overall, my picture still on the wall. So I guess I did some good things in there. <laughs> but Brandon, I was going to ask real quick too, like coming from Brooklyn, I would assume you, you everyone in Brooklyn knew you were a black man. Um, but then like going to, to Erie, like you said, you know, kind of having to be in those spaces where they think that you are not, did you feel like you ran into that in your, your, with your teachers or you feel like you were treated like a little differently? Did you see a little glimpse of white privilege there? I ask, like, you know, as you kind of had to dip your toes cause they thought you were something that you were not. 
it it was very interesting. I felt like I I always had to explain, um, explain who I was, where I came from, especially just to kind of set the scene and essentially sort of just make them feel comfortable in a way, even if I didn't feel it was something I needed to do. Um, it just seemed to be that way. Um, I think that a lot of the 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 teachers, and particularly once they realized, like, oh, he's really smart, they started shopping my name around the campus. Especially, I'll never forget in my accounting to eleven class, and I like obviously I kind of got it on us. My parents had worked in financial services for a bit, and then I kind of got it and got did really well at, at the school. But in this one particular class, the professor was a white man. And he, you know, did well. And he came up to me and was like, oh, Brandon, you you killed that test. So you got I got like a 98. And he was like, you know, I think that there's some students that could really benefit from you tutoring them. And I'm like, I'm not going to go up and volunteer myself to be a tutor to nobody. Like, just let me <laughs> let me win on my own and so on and so forth. So. <laughs> Next thing I know, I left the classroom and I guess a few students who didn't do so well on the test went up to him and was just like, I think I need some additional help. I can't understand. So on and so forth. And so the unbeknownst to me, the professor was like, oh, you should talk to Brandon. He, you know, has a really good understanding of the concepts. Perhaps maybe some peer tutoring from him can help you. So one in particular student came up to me and was like, hey, are you going to try to, you know, work on your homework in the library? And I was like, I usually don't. But, you know, why not? He was being nice. The approach was wasn't, you know, it wasn't confrontational or anything like that. So I was like, sure. You want to go in the library, do some homework together? I'm down. Before I knew it, there was 15 students in the <laughs> library doing like he had done went and told his friends who told his friends. And they was just all like, oh, we going to go to the library <laughs> and work with him so that way we could get this homework done and also be ready for the exam. Now, I'm like, bro, I should have charged y'all each twenty dollars. I could have been great. <laughs> um but that was kind of indicative of the experience that I had. It was just like, oh, once like once one teacher or once one student kind of felt like I wasn't a threat or actually I could benefit them in a way, then now everybody started wanting to come along. <laughs> wow. It's you should have charged them. You should have charged them. You should have charged them. I really should. I really, I really should have. Make them buy you a lunch. Give you some meal points or something. I, Do something. But, and, but <laughs> it actually was when I had when I did that and I heard, oh, there's actually peer tutoring that you can do out of the Learning Resource Center at school. I was like, oh yeah, put me on the payroll for that because if they're gonna keep coming here, I at least need to be making something. So, <laughs> so between between that, uh, I was a, a campus tour guide. I did some private tutoring on the side. I had three jobs, and that was that was how I was making my ends meet. I love it. You was hustling. I was hustling. So, Brandon, you was on campus being a leader, but I mean, all leaders party, you know, and one part <laughs> of the party at BWS was, for us, was learning all the white music. It just was part of the party. Oh, yeah. Party! So, like, we got this segment it's called Rock On, where you share with Let's us. Go. Come on. Where you share with us that one. Oh, we rocking? Yeah. <laughs> I was realize all of us has dreads. Sorry. Go ahead, Anna. What do you do? Right. You can't see mine. Wait. Anna. There you go. There we yeah, go. bring them around. There you go. <laughs> oh, see? They here. Me, hold on. I just, I got to, mine is a little ponytail today. There we today. go. There we go. Uh-huh. We cute. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so rock on as you share with us that one white song you learned when you came to campus that you didn't know before so what is your rock on moment oh man I feel like there's two Go songs um <laughs> Sweet Caroline <laughs> yes definitely Good Times Never Seem So Good um and the second one was Don't Stop Believing by Jeremy <laughs> oh! 
Oh, yes. those are the two Brandon. we named. Yeah. Those are the two that we named. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, it was those two. I mean, I've been to so many weddings of my fellow alumni that when I was at school, these were the songs they were playing. And I'm like, I've never heard these songs <laughs> in my <laughs> life. And, and, and it was just like, okay. <laughs> And so yeah, those are those are my rock songs for sure. This I love this moment. Still, I still sing it, Brandon. <laughs> so, Sweet Caroline is what Anna said when we did this, and then Don't Stop mm-hmm. Believing is Journey is what I said. <laughs> <laughs> You're like our kindred I'm, spirit, right? <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, t- I'm telling you, those. I, I Every time I hear those songs now, I'm instantly transplanted back to freshman yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. Sure. That is awesome. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. I'm just excited that he named. You know what? We should start doing it. We should keep a tally of like the songs that the are songs? named. Yeah. Yeah. And make a playlist. Yeah, something. <laughs> and like, yes. I'm, I'm yeah, down for that playlist. We'll do that. Like, we should mm-hmm. do that. We should keep like a tally or something. Yeah. That is so fun. All right. <laughs> So when you um when you would hear the songs, like even in when you were in school, like do you feel like initially you were like, what the hell is this? What was that moment where you're like, all right, I can dig this? Did you like it immediately? How did you feel? Coming from Brooklyn. <laughs> going into that. At first I was like, I, I, at first it was it was so whack. It was so boring. It's just like, okay. But then after a while, you kind of start just th- their level of excitement. Got me excited because I'm like, if they're so pumped and so pressed about these songs, and then I started listening to it, and then it was like, ah, let me add a little my own mix to it, you know, and then it started becoming a thing, and so yeah, it it it, it, it was through sort of osmosis, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. So. Our next segment is about, like, once you kind of got there and was, like, deep in the, in the groove or whenever, was there a moment where you felt like you wanted to click your heels and just, like, go home? Like, I did this, I experienced this, and I don't know, it's time for me to go home or might want to bail a little early. Did you have any moments like that? Uh, I want to say... I did, and and I think one of those moments, Adele, you probably can remember, this was actually kind of my junior year when I was president of, of, of the Lion Ambassadors, and there were these two girls. Um, one's name started with a B, the other name started with a J. And uh, they were within the club and organization and just were just anti, they were anti branding on everything. And was going around and talking bad about me. And it got to the point where they showed up to my apartment. They didn't like, I guess, one of the decisions that I had made. And these were two white women. And and they showed up to my apartment with their resignation letters from the Lion Ambassadors talking about, we resigned. And <clears throat> coming bogarting into my apartment and tried to, you know, call me all these sorts of names and things like that. I was like, at that in particular point, it was just like, nope, I'm ready to go. But what I remembered was I, at the end of the day, still had my safe space. I still had my Adele and my Camerons and Sasha's and Britney's and all these other friends that I'd made who knew kind of like the community. And even when it was times of like, I was sort of stepping out and making those branches and trying to make waves and create friendships and things of that nature. And even if they didn't, even if they didn't serve me well, in the case of that particular situation, I always felt and I wanted to click my heels and leave in that case. I did it because I knew that I still at the end of the day had my friends that understood and had my back no matter what. Community. Community. Brandon, do you remember what I did with B's resignation? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I told Anna, oh, I, don't know Anna you... I told him just take the resignation wipe your butt with it who cares <laughs> oh we resolved right? good it's for the better um, of the organization so I sure right. you know, I sure did wipe it on the with, between the <laughs> with my jeans on but still I was like we're gonna take this right, like, I'm like, who cares well, like all they, well, he wasn't even doing anything like that that warranted <clears throat> all that it literally was just his position 
And you know <laughs> they just anti branding. And, and, and Jay thought that she was gonna be the one that was gonna run the organization and it did not work out. Uh, right. Your peers uh, spoke. It wasn't <laughs> Brandon uh, didn't even campaign as hard as he should have. Your peers spoke. So uh, like whatever. Exactly. Take it and, uh-huh. and and you know, don't let the doorknob hit you with a good little splitcher. Who cares? Period. Exactly. Move on. Period. Um, I have a question. How did you know? How did you know? Brandon, our other segment is, did you have that moment when you were on campus and you realized this is the place for me? I made the right decision. These nifty lions. If you call them nifty one, one more time. You call us nifty lions I'm, I'm one more time. I'm going to come see you. Oh. <laughs> she doing it on Brandon. I had a- I had an opening. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> but no, for real, Brad, is there a moment when you were on campus and you were like, this is the place for me. Penn State is it. Uh, I would say probably when I had come up for Sleeping Bag Weekend. Uh, so this is a program that they used to do uh, way years ago where if you were a high school senior, you could come onto the campus and actually spend the night with a uh, with a. Uh, college student, live in the dorms for, you know, a night and experience, you know, that. And so I had happened to do that in 2005, it was April 2005, and I ended up getting stuck in Erie because it was snowing. So if anybody knows anything about Erie PA, it can snow in July, it can snow in January, it just, it's crazy. It don't stop. So it was like, it doesn't stop. And so there was this major snowstorm and I remember just how overly accommodative the staff were to me. I remember how accommodative the students were to me. Um, And I just remember that overall just feeling and sense of community. Um, even, like I said, there weren't very many people that even looked like me or, or or had the same life experiences that I had up until that in particular point. But I felt that sense of community there. And I that was, like I said, a pre-student. But then I think for me, as an actual student, uh, where I felt like, okay, yup, this was the right move. This was the right decision. It was when uh, I was named the outstanding first year student and had to give the uh, speech at convocation, which convocation is obviously when the, stu- the beginning of the school year and opens the school year. And they always have the first year student of the following class speak to the incoming freshman class and so I remember having to have to write that conversation and I wrote it as a letter form to like dear to myself as if I were just now coming in and being on the other side of it and I remember getting a standing ovation from the students uh, the incoming students and the faculty um, during that time and that's when I felt like okay yep remember that message of like coming in and changing the narrative I'm on my way I love that. I love that because it happened early on. Sometimes it don't happen until yeah. later, but you, yours happened early on. That's what's mm-hmm. up. And you're able mm-hmm. to kind of ride the wave with the exactly, Nittany right. Lions. It, was, it, was, it wasn't <laughs> always amazing. Of course, there were peaks and valleys all over the all over the place. But the one thing that was always, always true and Regardless, is that word we we keep using it? Community. Mm-hmm. There was community all around in in our our small group of friends that I, that we established. I remember going to Adele's wedding, uh, and literally you could look at her bridal party, and it was like that same community that I talked about that met that very first day was still that same community twenty plus years later. At that particular point, was still there, and so and even some of those were other relationships and friendships and things that I made. Those that community still exists. So that's a, it was a beautiful thing, and continues to be. A beautiful Can you tell Anna how awesome I was? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Anna, you tell we, me the truth, we Brandon. lived in the same dorm for a little bit freshman yeah, year. Dorm, the dorm, room, the dorm, dorm, dorm building. Yep. Mm-hmm. A, I lived on the second floor. She lived on the first. 
Really? Yep. So y'all had co-ed mm-hmm. situations? Yeah, the guys yep. were always on the yep. upper two floors and the girls were on the, the lower levels. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and Adele probably even remembers that's when I was, uh, you know, I I did not come out until later in my college career, but that very first few days there was the girl downstairs on the first floor <laughs> I caught myself trying to get with. Um, and, and that was quite the experience. <laughs> <laughs> there is so much more there. There's so much there. Do we have time? (laughs) (laughs) Hell yeah. I I have to come to Chicago and tell you about that Uh one. (laughs) I was like, leave that girl alone. (laughs) (laughs) But yep, he lived upstairs. And then I ended up moving to a different dorm. But yeah, I used to go hang out in his room and we'd be on AOL Instant Messenger talking to people <laughs> you want to go to you want to go to Bruno's you want to go to Dobbins mm-hmm. go eat mm-hmm. uh, those are the those yeah. those were the days and my most favorite story Adele already knows what story I'm gonna tell because I find it to be overly like it's it's an emotional story but it's by far one of the most my most favorite memory of college whatsoever it was our freshman year we were flying back home to see our mothers um and it was like the first time that we had left home you know or and left our mothers you know for an extended period of time and they had what was that fall holiday i think they just it was just like a universe it was just like a day yeah, off it was a random day. And a random friday and so we both booked flights from Erie back to New York and DC respectively uh, and and surprised our moms. And it was like from Friday and then on Sunday and then on the Sunday back, we both were in the airport flying back to Erie at the same time. And it was just like, I I just remember that experience. And you know, I got the photo. Yes. <laughs> you know, I got the photo. I ain't gonna pull it out. But you can show Anna. I'm cool with it. Cause we oh, we flew man. out of Erie and we both end up having a layover in Detroit, and then we went our separate ways. Him to New York, me to DC, from Detroit, and we were in that little. Detroit has that little tunnel with all the lights in the airport. We were yes, like, you know, I thought I was. I thought I was fair. <laughs> As, as the kids say, I thought I was trade back then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were serving I I it was, up. I, was, I thought I was giving. But it was such a dope <laughs> m- moment, even in hindsight, looking back, because Brandon and I have such a love for our moms. And, you know, as the years went on, unfortunately, we both lost our moms. So to have that, like, shared experience, you know, to, like, know we both was on the same energy. They both were surprised. Both our moms love, like, Brandon's mom loved me. My mom loved Brand. Like, just kind of built that relationship off of freshman year. And like he said, all these years later, to have that memory that connects us and our moms, it's just a really dope, a dope experience and a good feeling to have. Yeah. And this is why we do the pod, because <laughs> oh, we Jesus. out here... Why you zoomed it on me? You supposed to be zoomed it on like, us. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Let me see if I could. Can you see it? Can yeah, you see it? Can you see oh it? my god! No, no just my all teeth. I see is teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Here, text it to me. I'll send it to Anna. Come on, I'm gonna text it to. I'm sending it right now. Oh. oh. But ain't we this what it's good. about? I mean, this is why we wanted to do the pod, because there's these beautiful stories of black folks in these predominantly white institutions who leave with family, chosen family, connections, community that last 20 years. Absolutely. And we don't hear those stories. Is it all, you know, roses and sunshine? No, but no place is, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And that's just it. It's like, even in the midst of a, in the midst of a PWI, where the community in that case does not represent you or or your ideals if you will like it still exists and and continues to move on not anna not anna look at anna is cracking up laughing right now yes anna is cracking up laughing Uh, i'm listening i'm listening to you brad but i'm just watching anna Roll no, across the screen. <laughs> <laughs> you better cock your head to the side, okay? Oh, I see you. I see you, Brandon. You tell me, nothing, I was giving nothing. Oh my god! But tell what we got going on here. I don't know. Buttons at the top. I don't is know. that a tie? That is. I don't what is, know. I oh just, man, we rock. I, I liked wearing ties at one point. I don't know. <laughs> but that goes, you know what's wild? I was literally sitting here 
literally this August, it will be 18 years since I met Adele. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Mm. Literally, that picture is from 18 years ago, which is insane to think. That's crazy. And, and even in the midst of just, I mean, so much life has happened for for both of us you know all of the all of the good all of the bad all of the ups and all of the downs i mean it's an amazing thing to still to have that connection like for me we just pick right back up from where we left oh, off all the time and yeah. and and it and i think that's just a wonderful thing yeah to, to to be able to say and and again community in the in the pwi yeah oh it's, it's there. It's like what Anna said. You go from friends to family. Like, y'all my family now. My kids call them mm-hmm. Uncle Branch because they couldn't say Brandon mm-hmm. at one point. So they called him Uncle <laughs> Branch. I think they call him, like I said, Daddy Warbucks because every Christmas, birthday, whatever, mm-hmm. here goes some money, Athena. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like we family now. Like, exactly. Girl, we, we tied in. So. I got my, my I was babysitting Athena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So. So Brandon, it's, it's great. I am so glad you got to join us today. And, and oh, thank you guys for having me. It's been this a blast. This was a blast. You see, Beans? Oh, Athena. Yeah. Her, third, her third birthday. Like, come on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she, thanks for her. She's nine now. Ooh. Anyway, oh, but, I know. yes, but you know, I appreciate you so much, friend, for joining us. And you know, we'll just keep keep riding this thing till the wheels fall off. Yes. Sure. You know it, you know it. Thank you for tuning in to the Head Nod Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on the Cube app and at DCP Official across social. Family, follow my sis Adele at I am Adele Coleman across all socials. And follow the coolest to ever do it, Anna Deshawn at Anna Deshawn on all socials. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And if you really dig it, leave a rating and a review. Keep nodding your heads with us. Until next time, this is the Head Nod. <laughs>